Windows File Protection Everyone who's been around the Windows operating system family for a while has experienced the blue screen of death. In most cases you have a server or a workstation that's been operating flawlessly for some time, then you install a seemingly harmless application and bam, a blue screen. It really builds character. The most common cause of blue screens is this so-called harmless application that just has to overwrite some core system files and this kicks your whole system into an unstable mess. So Microsoft introduced Windows File Protection to combat this problem. Now it's the function of the Windows File Protection Service or WFP to prevent the overwriting of system files and it does this by comparing the digital signatures of the original files that were installed from the Windows CD with the ones that are copied to your server when an application is installed. If an application replaces a core system file, Windows File Protection checks the digital signature against the catalog. If the newly copied file has the same digital signature, then the file is allowed to stay. But if it doesn't have the same digital signature, then WFP will copy the original system file back to where it belongs, as it keeps a copy of all critical system files in a hidden directory called DLL cache. Now executable code carrying digital signatures are only currently distributed by Microsoft in five ways. Now the first method is when you install a new service pack on your server. When you install a new service pack, a new catalog file is added to the existing catalogs on your system. These catalogs are stored in the Windows System 32 catroot directory and then a new catalog would be given a name of SP followed by the number of the service pack and ending with .cat. So if it was service pack 1 we were installing, then the directory would be called sp1.cat. The next executable code type carrying a digital signature is hotfixes and operating system upgrades that are launched using winnt32.exe. The Microsoft Windows Update Services or Software Installation Services if you have a SUS server is another method. And finally, we have files that are copied using the Device Manager and Class Installer. Now it's important to understand that even though it's referred to as a service, the Windows File Protection Service isn't a standard type of service. So if we click on Start, Administrative Tools, and then launch the Services MMC, we'll just expand this, and we'll scroll down to where the Windows File Protection Service should be, at least alphabetically, and then you'll notice that it doesn't exist. And that's because Windows File Protection is a core system service which is embedded into the operating system. Now the controls for Windows File Protection are stored in the registry. So if we open up the registry editor by clicking on Start, Run, and then typing in regedit and hitting Enter, and then we'll browse to HKey Local Machine, Software, Microsoft, Windows NT, current version, and then we'll scroll down and we'll select Win Logon. Now in the right hand pane we have two values here which correspond to Windows File Protection. The first is SFC Disable, or System File Checker Disabled if you like, and it has a value of zero. Now zero indicates that Windows File Protection is enabled. If you want to temporarily disable Windows File Protection for some reason, say perhaps you're a developer and you're testing a new application that needs to overwrite some core system files, you can set this value to 1. And then Windows File Protection Service will be disabled for the next reboot only. So if you reboot again, this value will then change back to 0 and Windows File Protection will be automatically enabled. Now the next value we have is SFC Quota. Now it has a value of FFFF, FFFF, and that's the default value, which simply configures how much disk space the Windows File Protection Service can use for the DLL cache folder. Now this value here is actually 4 gigabytes. Now you could also type in minus 1 here, and it's going to have exactly the same effect. Now Windows also comes with a command line utility for you to check the system files to ensure that everything is in order. So we'll open up a command prompt, and then we'll type in SFC. And just with about every command, SFC has built-in help, so by typing a question mark and hitting enter, you can see the available options. Now one thing I should mention is that you must be logged in using an administrative account to use the SFC utility, and you must be logged in locally. So if you're logged in using remote desktop, 
then this command will fail. Okay, as you can see, we've got uh, six options here for the system file checker utility. We've got scan now, scan once, scan boot, revert, purge case, and cache size. Now these are pretty self-explanatory. Scan now will scan the operating system immediately and check that all protected files are where they should be and haven't been tampered with. And if it does happen to find a protected file that's missing or has been overwritten, then it will retrieve the original file from the DLL cache directory and then replace it with the original. Now scan once just scans all protected system files once only and it will do that at the next system reboot. Scan boot will scan all protected files every time the system reboots. Now this is obviously going to slow down your system, but it can be useful in situations where you have users that just love to install stuff on their computer and muck everything up at every stage they can get. In all honesty, I'd recommend using group policy and permissions to prevent a user like this making your life hell, but you can use this option as well to ensure that the system files are always going to be intact when they restart. Next we have revert, and this will set the system file checker back to its default setting and this is useful if you've set the scan boot option and now you want to revert back to normal operation. Now purge cache does exactly what it says and it purges the file cache and even though it doesn't say this it will actually then scan all of the protected Windows file immediately and finally we have cache size and obviously this sets the file cache size now X here is just a value in megabytes, so if you want a fixed limit on how much space Windows is going to use to cache core system files, and you can set it manually using this option. Now a final note worthy of mention is that if your DLL cache directory happens to become corrupted, then any of these scan now, scan once, or scan boot commands will rebuild the contents of the DLL cache directory. Alright, well let's go and take a look at uh, Windows File Protection in action and what we'll do is we'll open up my computer and we'll go to our Windows directory and we'll go to our System32 directory and we'll scroll down, in fact we'll scroll back up and we'll find the Windows Calculator. Now what we'll do, seeing for some reason that Microsoft decided that the Windows Calculator is a critical system file, we'll right click on it and we'll select to rename it. So we rename this file to uh, calc.xxx for argument's sake and we'll just click on yes to say yeah, we do want to change our file name extension. Now this can take a few moments but if we scroll all the way down to the bottom here of our directory we can now see that calc.exe has just reappeared. So what's happened here is Windows file protection has kicked in, recognized that a core system file has been changed or removed and now it's retrieved it back from our DLL cache and copied it back here. Now I'll just refresh this and we'll scroll uh, back down to where uh, Windows Calculator should be. There it is. And we can see here that our calc.xxx file still does exist, but calc.exe has been replaced and everything's back the way it should be. So there you have the Windows File Protection Service in action. It's reassuring to know that you really don't have to do anything and the Windows File Protection Service sits there in the background ensuring that your critical system files are protected. It's just another step towards making your Windows operating system free of the dreaded blue screen.